Donnie McNamee and his wife Mary. Uh, as you probably have seen from the interview, and I don't intend to delay, to delay too long because uh, the range of presentations which we have to make is quite extensive, but they are on the menu cards and your tables. Uh, it embraces all aspects of uh, Gaelic games and some aspects of culture. So uh, before moving into the presentations, I would now like to welcome uh, Peter Quinn and uh, ask him to, to address you.
if they want to succeed, if they want to emulate the players who are being honoured tonight by having won Dr. McKenna Cup medals this year, Brian Tui and Gary Walsh, and Gary Walsh who was a member of the Railway Cup team that won the Railway Cup this year. If they want to get that sort of success, and if they want to succeed with the club within the county championship, then they have got to be prepared to put in effort and they've got to be prepared to make sacrifices. Success in the GAA, success in any other field game if it goes to that, as I said earlier, it comes to those who make the greatest effort, to those who are prepared to suffer most, because effort begets its own reward, and its own reward is success on the playing field. And of course, we all know that you can make a lot of effort and not get the reward. But the reality is that nobody has ever succeeded, and that applies to the team that dominated in this county through the late 60s and the 70s and into the early 80s when you were part of St. Joseph's. Those guys didn't win championships just because they were great footballers. They won championships because they had the skills, but they were prepared to make the effort. They were prepared to make the sacrifices. They were prepared to get the best out of those skills and go on and use that ability that was given to them by their maker. Use that ability then to, that they could build on it and make them the great footballers that they turned out to be. And indeed, a number of them were involved in Donegal's first ever Ulster Senior Championship win, and some of them were involved in Senior Championship win, wins that occurred after that. But it's not just in the area of the games that this club has contributed massively to the GAA. You've contributed too significantly in the area of administration. In your contribution, not just recently, although the contribution of recent years has been very important, but the contribution that this club has made to the GAA within this county and outside the borders of this county down through the years. And your current chairman's father as county secretary set an example which has been followed by many county secretaries since. He was one of the great county secretaries in our association. And to this day, you have other men who are now contributing significantly. And your chairman is a member of the provincial council and of the county board. He's also a member of a committee at central level. And it's people like that who make the GAA what it is. It's people to put that sort of effort in who strengthen the administration of the association. Just as effort is required to make players, so effort is required too to produce good administrators. This club, the same as every other club, has a commitment that was inherited by the club, by the association, from its founders. When this association was founded by Cusick and by Davin, they were the people who laid down the parameters within which the games would be played. But the man who developed the idealism of the association was Dr. Croke. And he saw the association as more than just a games playing body. He saw the association as an organization that would contribute to the development of Ireland and particularly to the development of rural Ireland. And in South Donegal, even if you live in a town, you're still part of rural Ireland. And your club, the same as every other club, has a massive contribution to make to the community in which you live. You get your strength from your community, but in addition, you give strength to that community. And what we have got to do as an association and what you have got to do as a club is to harness the energy in that community, to achieve the ideals which were laid down for us, to achieve the targets which were established for us, the targets which still exist for us, the targets which in the past related to social and cultural development, many of them now today have got to take second place to economic development because obviously the greatest single problem for our young people today, and we're an association that's about serving the youth of Ireland, the greatest single problem that faces the youth of Ireland today is the economic problem, unemployment, emigration, issues of that sort. And the GAA's clubs has, have got to address that issue. They can't say, well, that's for the politicians because if in recent times politicians have failed to deliver on that, then we as an association can't stand aside and say, let other people do it. We can't hand out the begging bowl and say what we're entitled to because if it's not going to be given, then we can't sit back and assume that society can degenerate in the way in which society inevitably must degenerate if our young people are put on board an emigrant ship or if our young people stay at home and are unemployed. So I would say to the club, to this club, that they have got to become even more involved in the community than they've been in the past. And I know that this club has been heavily involved in the community. But the demands of the future are going to require that you become even more involved, more involved in aspects outside of the games. And there are those who would say, well, of course, that's hypocritical of the GAA because in some ways they don't deliver on some of the non-games aspects outside of it. And they would use the example of the recent affair of the RDS to point to that. 
And they would say that in relation to the RDS, we have proved that we are not all things to all men. I would have to say to you that we were never set out to be all things to all men. I don't into the detail of the RDS affair because I'd be very happy actually to get into the detail of the RDS affair. But since legal documents were served on Monday last, obviously I have to abide by the sub rules that are imposed by the courts in this country. And therefore I can't talk about that issue in any sort of detail. But let me say this, that we as an association made a decision. It was made democratically, it wasn't made by any one person or by any minority group of people. There was no political dimension to it. The reality is that we laid down conditions under which an activity could be undertaken. And those conditions were broken. And just as if on a football field, a player violates the rules of the game and a free is given against him and he continues to violate them and he gets the line. Well then, within the administration of the association, we have to operate within the rules that are laid down by Congress. And until such time as Congress changes those rules, then those of us who are charged with responsibility for their implementation will apply them see fit within the context of what Congress laid down for us. And there was no element of hypocrisy or there was no element of political uh, endeavour or political posturing in relation to the decision that was made. We laid down the rules that were not abided by and we blew the whistle and we gave the free and the fact is that the game couldn't go on. And if they had abided by the rules, there would have been no question of the game not going ahead. And I say again that this was not a decision that was taken on any sort of sectarian or bigoted basis. I would have to say that when the recommendation was made by management committee, only one member of the 12 on management comes from the six counties. Only seven members of the 48 on central council come from the six counties. And notwithstanding what the hy hypocritical Sunday Independent or any other document might say, this was not a six county, 26 county decision. This was a decision that was based on violation of our rules. As I say, I don't want to, I'm not going to get into the detail of it because of the fact that legal proceedings have been issued and those legal proceedings may very well take a couple of years to come to fruition and we're just going to have to sit back and see what happens. But I'll tell you one thing, we're not sorry that we made the decision, we are sorry about the way in which we failed to communicate the justification for it. That's a problem that has to be sorted out by the association. We've got to learn from that experience and when we make decisions like that we've got to communicate them the basis for them better in the future. But I have absolutely no regrets about the decision that was taken. I equally have no regrets about defending it. And I would say, as, again, as I said already, if the rules had been abided by, and we were prepared to bend the rules, and we did bend the rules, when we told them that they could reapply for permission to launch the game. And if they had stuck by the bent rules that we uh, offered them, then there would have been no problem. But when they decided to thumb their noses at us, neither we nor any other organization of our strength and our status, could be or would be prepared to allow that sort of thing to happen in this country of ours. It would be a sour country if we were prepared to bend our rules, to break our rules in the interest of those who believe that they have a right to dictate to us. And as long as I'm president of the GAA, that will not happen because I won't allow it to happen if it's within my power to avoid it. I would... <laughs> Finally, I would just like to thank the Irua Club through some of its officers for the support that they have given me not just in the last month although I valued the support the messages that I got from this area within the last month I valued them very highly <coughs> but I would also like to thank them for the support that I have got for the last four or five years indeed since I first became an officer of the Ulster Council I've always felt I had the support of this area and all of this county and I thank both Valley Shannon and all of Donegal for the support that they have given me in my time as an administrator within the association and finally might I say that if and the players in Eirua are prepared to put the effort in that next year they'll be back winning senior championships not just in hurling but they'll be back winning the senior football championship as well at the start of a new year, as your chairman said, we look back at what has been achieved, and your achievements this year are the sort of achievements of which most clubs would be proud. But I know well that there's nobody here tonight who wouldn't want to see the Senior Football Championship trophy here as well as all the trophies that you have. And I know that if you put the effort in, that Senior Championship trophy can be here when you convene next year for next year's dinner dance. I wish you well in that effort. I know that you have the ability, that the tradition is in this area, that the commitment is there among your officers, that the ability is there among your players, and if that ability and that effort is properly harnessed, then success will inevitably follow. 
or fucking scurry card you to is all them going yarn a quidge more than it on over or some com- or some common loot class grail trees and a blade and the newest i guess tommy can't you go nation over shin i guess more of yours me hannafin my land of nation over shin i crave on comedy off of some blade and a tall a mock rowing go you all or a go you rock j our near up the august hour number day go to me to my august galair Championship 
uh, have to get the runners off medals. So some players have three medals to get. They'll be called in alphabetical order, and um, so the players can be thinking ahead. But we're not going to use the stage names like Grimley and so on. The, 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 the family surnames. Paul Bannon, senior reserve. Gavin Burke, senior. John Boyle, senior and reserve. John Boyle. And here. Gary Brennan, reserve and minor. Donald Buggy, singer and minor. Yes. Malady Cullen, singer and reserve. Jamie yes. Condon, singer. Yes. Joe Corn, singer. Jerry Corn Singer. Mark Curie, Singer and Reserve. Michael Clary, Singer and Reserve. Jerry Carey Reserve. Connor Carney Reserve. Joe Doherty Singer. Yudin Doyle Singer. John Duffy Singer. Peter Duffy Reserve. Andrew Duffy Reserve, Tom Daly Reserve, <laughs> Keith Doherty Reserve and Minor, <laughs> Keith Doherty, Seamus Flynn Singer, Thomas Gallagher Reserve, Kevin Cohen Singer, Donna Cohen Singer, and Dermot Cohen Singer. Teddy Kane Reserve. Martin Gillespie, Singer and Reserve. Peter Gallagher, Singer and Reserve. Teddy Kane Reserve. Joe Gallon Reserve. Paul Kane, Singer and Reserve. Christy Kane, Reserve and Minor. Christy. Sylvester McGuire, Singer and Reserve. Brandon Martin, singer. <laughs> Brandon Martin, singer. James Malone, singer and reserve, not here. John Muldoon, singer, reserve and minor. Well done, John. Thank you for singer. Tommy McDermott, singer. Anthony McGrath, singer, reserve and minor. Jerry McManus, singer and reserve. 
Paul Negrini, Senior and Reserve. <coughs> Senior and Reserve. Senior Reserve and Minor. <coughs> Emin, just when you hear Emin, Emin McShee Reserve. <laughs> Fergal McGrath Reserve and Minor. <laughs> Donald McGowan Reserve. Seamus McCafferty Reserve. Charles O'Donnell Singer. Thank you. 
Well, at this stage we move on to the party presentations and we will, uh, uh, we have quite a number of people to make presentations. So again, there were two senior uh, titles, one the uh, Sheep of the God and the Deacon of Manon. So if Patrick um, Quinn from the party committee will come forward, he can use this name. And first of all, Tommy Brennan, the captain of the that won both of those uh, trophies. And Tommy also was um, elected as uh, or selected as Donegal Horror of the Year. Uh, I'd like uh, Pat Cannon, the County Hurling Officer, to make these presentations, please. Uh, Mickey Dolan. 
attorno a tutti che hanno chiesto. David Burke, well David's in Cork, so we'll not have him tonight. We'll see that he gets his medal. Jerry McGordon.
Could have called on him. Damian Conlon. with the rest of the trophies, will you please? <laughs>
sorry, finally the girls themselves want to make a presentation to Alan Cain. There's always one behind us. <laughs> now to uh, finish things up and the main uh, club award of 1991 club man of the year goes to Jimmy Gallagher so Peter Quinton for Senior Footballer of the Year will be presented by Phil McLoon, our club president, who we're very pleased to welcome back here after uh, being out of action for a short time. So uh, he, he needs his extra legs here before he gets up this length. We are delighted to welcome him back. Senior Footballer of the Year. A senior footballer of the year for, for 1991. Senior footballer of the year for 
they belong to Hiri. One of them was used uh, in the early 1900s. So uh, the, the family wanted to formally hand them over to the club, and uh, I'd uh, asked Maureen to come forward now to do that, uh, and Pat Butler to accept them. Thank you. Connell Gallagher there, secretary, <laughs> secretary extraordinary. Extraordinary. Four o'clock in the morning this is. Yeah, and he's still trying to get into the pubs. Thank so God. you won a lot of awards, didn't you? Well, I had a brave few now, some unexpected ones. Well, one actually, I'm just trying to... Too much for you, is it? Show me how the tears are. Sorry? Show me the tears in your eyes. Oh no, it was very emotional. I, I, uh... 